Hi synth geeks and electronics nerds, Chris here with uh, another uh, great invention, as if I ever had any inventions on YouTube, but you know what I mean. If this doesn't take you back to 1983, I don't know what will. But I've decided I'm going to build a little sequencer for a modular synthesizer, and uh, we've got it here. So what we have here is your basic 555 timer running into a 4017 decade counter. And then the output of the decade counter, yes, believe me, it is true uh, in this massive spaghetti here. The decade counter is feeding transistors to show the uh, channel assignments. I've only got six of them set up, but of course it's capable of ten. And using a very crude brute force approach to technology, I'm using some 40-year-old Potter Brumfeld relays to switch on the control voltages going to the synthesizer. Speaking of the synthesizer, here we have a Pia 9700S modular, uh, which was built from a kit, of course. It is getting its control voltages from the sequencer, and it is also getting its trigger signals from the sequencer. You can see the little red lights blinking there. So I like to think that this sequencer is going to be a little bit different from some others in that it has three running modes. It can run free, as it's doing now, or it can trigger manually from a push button, or it can sync to an external audio source. So I'm going to turn on the stereo here so we can hear what it's doing. Uh, let's see, I believe it's that one. So now we're hearing what the Pia is putting out. And as one can see, it is in sync with the LEDs. Rate is controlled by a potentiometer. Of course, this is all breadboarded. So we can turn the rate up. Up to its man maximum rate. At which point it sounds like a video game. Each pitch is controlled by a potentiometer. And so on. So that's mode one. And now I'm going to pause and we're going to reset the machine for mode two. Okay, I have reassigned some of this spaghetti here and now we are deriving our control voltages from, or actually not control voltages, but timing signals from a second 555 timer over here. And if I turn the audio on, here we're on this stage and now you just use the push button. One push, one stage. You're hearing a double trigger of the signal. I'm going to turn that off. As a result of the 555 timing circuit, I haven't quite worked out how to get that double uh, trigger signal out of the timing on this one, but I don't consider that a major problem. Anyway, this mode is just for setting each note to pitch and adjusting the synthesizer if you want for each stage. Okay, now we're going to reset the thing again for what I think is the coolest mode. Okay, so here we are at mode three. Now this is the thing that I always wanted a sequencer to do, and that is to play in time with a synthesizer set up uh, so that the clock stays accurate and it can do subdivisions of time and all this sort of thing. Well, most people do that with MIDI clocks and subdividing the clock rate by a certain amount for each step and having programs per step and all that kind of thing. Which is fine, but I'm not an electronics engineer in case you couldn't tell. And I took a different approach which is just good old-fashioned audio sync. And so there is a third 555 I've got hooked up here as a uh, one-shot pulse and it takes incoming audio and transforms it into a nice straight square pulse which can then be read by the 4017 decade counter. So, come over here. Uh, I 
arbitrarily chose this key on the synthesizer because the sound of it, I believe it's a wood block, is a nice sharp pulse which can be heard from here. So if I tap this key, and it could be any key, it will advance the sequencer one step. It is simply hearing the audio output of the synthesizer. There is no MIDI signal going in there. I've just simply got an audio cable and see if I tap more quickly it keeps up. The setup of the second 555 timer one shot system is almost exactly the same as the first one for the push button but with smaller capacitors so that the one shot pulse is much shorter and it will keep up with music more effectively. So if we turn the audio back on you can hear the pitch from there. Now when I hit play on the sequencer you will see start to move here. How about that? I have another track which I can access. Here's a different rhythm track. I can alternate between them because I'm just tr using different tracks on the sequencer. In case you're wondering where those awesome percussion sounds are coming from, they're coming from this synthesizer over here. A Vermona analog drum, drum machine. I do not have the synth sound going through a gate, so when an input signal stops, you still hear the oscillator. So anyway, there you have it. This is the breadboard version of my sequencer, and I will build a permanent version with 10 uh, stages instead of the 6, which it is now, it's simply because I ran out of room on the breadboard. And uh, I'll post another video when it's done. So keep watching this space over and out.